guys welcome back to the channel as always thank you for clicking play it's here then it's the season finale it's the final ever fm18 episode um and we're just going to run through what has happened in the last couple of games you can see them already down there we rounded out the season with two very convincing victories against bristol city and qpr um We've got the final league table to look at. We've got the end of season club news, the, uh, the the things like the goal of the season and that sort of thing. So we'll have a look at those and then we'll flip forward and have a look and see what happens in the playoffs and see who would have joined us in the Premier League. Um, so I won't go into too much detail on those uh, on those results. You can see them there. What that did do is it did give us the club record victories in a season of 29 we smashed 95 points in the end uh, Wolves ended up going up Brighton totally totally choked so they will be in the playoffs along with West Brom Reading and Preston Millwall pulled off the great escape by beating Birmingham on the final day of the season at St Andrews to get themselves safe. Um, they were obviously not favourites away at Birmingham. If Birmingham had won, it would have been Millwall potentially that went down. As you can see, Bolton probably would have been the ones to go. But yeah, what a what an end to the season. As I said, we you know, we we totally deserve to win. Um we were just top for half the season. If we have a look at the uh, the teams in the playoffs, I just want to see if we've got anyone that's made a surge. So you can see here, Brighton in the purple, they were second for a long, long time, weren't they? All the way here to match day 41, and then they dropped to third, and they couldn't get themselves back above Wolves because Wolves, well, they you know they were in and around third place for most of the season, and then just hit a brilliant run of form to get themselves into the playoffs. If we have a look at West Brom, they've wow, they have had a big, big climb up into the into the playoff places, going as high as third after 32 games. And then they've just kind of leveled themselves off between fourth and sixth. And they ended up finishing fourth, of course. Reading, um ooh, it's getting a bit confusing there now, isn't it? Let's have a look. Reading, they were a lot higher and they kind of tailed off and just managed to sneak themselves back into the playoffs so they might fancy themselves and Preston in sixth how have they done well they've always been there there or thereabouts haven't they start the season really well dropped down and outside the playoffs but then they surged into them and stayed there um, but they have tailed away in the last couple of games of the season into sixth so it's going to be really interesting a lot of the time you see a team don't you that come up into fifth or sixth you know from right down at the bottom um, on a really good run of form and then go on to get promotion so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens there so let's get into the um, the club news so as I say we've got the record number of wins in a season then we've got um, the overall best 11 so, uh, we're only two seasons in so it's not really um, not really that important so let's have a look here the fans player of the season was Iosti Perez with 61% he smashed it didn't he Chris Lerva and Phil Billing uh, was second and third goal of the season is Phil Billing from just before Christmas against Reading um, I'll have a look at that one in a second uh, signing of the season, Iosi Perez, ten million pounds from Newcastle. Young player of the season, no surprise, it's Roshan Williams. He has been superb. So let's have a look at this match. It was away at Reading. Phil Billing scoring in our beautiful red away shirts. Uh, let's see. Uh, did we do this game on camera? I can't remember. I know we did one of our Reading games on camera. Um, let's have a look here then. So Aaron Moy has it here out to Forrest I think it's a long shot isn't it from Billing Fredericks across to him here yeah and it's a long shot into the bottom corner I've got a feeling that one was live on camera very very good goal not convinced it was the best one of the season but hey that's what's been given um so the season review uh would be expected to be in the running for a playoff place but finished top um match of the season was our 2-1 win at West Brom Moment to forget our 4 1 humbling at Preston. Um, yeah, so average attendance was 19,815, which is 80% full. And again, as something that is always in my saves, 
the highest number of players used, 32. I always use those. Um, end of season team meeting. Let's just go in and we'll do that. And we're going to say we can... Um, congratulations on getting promoted. Not mid-table finish. Not mid-table finish. Uh, keep us up. That will be it. Excellent. Good stuff. Well done. And I don't understand that. I really don't understand the morale thing. Um, the confidence review, absolutely delighted. Yeah, 89%. Untouchable. Wow, I'm untouchable. That is really good. That should be an achievement, isn't it? I think I'm just sure. Is it 90% for the um, for the achievement? Um, what else have we got? Pre-season start date. Um, I will do that now because I always like a long pre-season so that's that sorted so let's have a look just before we fast forward on um at the fixtures have, have they been they haven't been set yet have they do we have do we have do we have do we have where's the semi-finals oh so we're only five days away so we're going to go through and we're going to see who is going to join us in the premier league stay tuned here we go, the first of the playoff semi-finals, the first leg at Deepdale, Preston against Brighton. Let's hit continue and let's see what happens in this one. That should be... A, whoa! Wow! What a... Whoa! What a scoreline! Um, what on earth happened there? Preston 6, Brighton 4. But look at that, it was 1-0... No, it was one all at half time, wasn't it? Iskiedo put Brighton ahead. Josh Harrop equalised, um, and then it just all hell broke loose. And it was six four after seventy seven minutes. Brighton have got four away goals to take back to the Amex. What a ridiculous match that is! Time for the second game. It's Reading against West Brom at the Medeski. Uh, this should again be a pretty decent game. And wow, a two two draw. Both of West Brom's goals are own goals. That is pretty unfortunate, isn't it? Uh, Bodvarsson and Swift with the Reading goals. It was 2-2 before half-time. Neither team could uh, add to their score in the second half. Both of these games are going to be really interesting going into their second leg. And it's West Brom that do it. West Brom go to Wembley with a 2-1 win on the night, a 4-3 win on aggregate. Paul McShane, who scored an own goal in the first match, on the score sheet at the right end this time, but it's heartbreak for the Royals, and it's the Baggies who are boying in their way to Wembley. And we have the second leg of Preston Brighton to, uh, to decide their opponents. Surely we're not going to get another 10 goals in the second leg. Well, let's find out. Second leg at the Amex. Here we go. Brighton with four away goals, but a two-goal deficit to make up on Preston. Let's see what happens. And it is a 1-0 win. Well, of course, it had to be very, very low scoring after that second leg, didn't it? Tom Clark, former Huddersfield Town player, scoring the only goal 18 minutes from time. And Preston go through 7-4 on aggregate. So in a couple of weeks, it will be Preston against West Brom for a place in the Premier League. Wembley, the venue for West Bromwich Albion against Preston North End. Supposedly, hundreds of millions of dollars rest on this game, don't they? Who is going to come back into the Premier League? Will it be West Brom? Will it be Preston, who won't have been in the top flight for a long, long time, I imagine? Let's hit continue and let's see who is joining us and Wolves in the top flight. Here we go. Who's it going to be? It is Preston North End. A goal from... Okoti, 10 minutes from time, sees Preston into the top flight. That is some turnaround, isn't it? Because if we have a look at the table, get out. Let's, have, let's try and bring... Oh, come on. Ah, there we go. They finish sixth. Preston, North End, 20 points behind us, 13 behind Wolves. And nine behind Brighton and Hove Albion. But they are the ones that are celebrating on the pitch at Wembley. Preston North End will join ourselves and Wolves in the in the Premier League. Um, and just a little look at the overview here. You can see James Wilson 
and Tom Barkhausen were the top scorers and Ayosi Perez was the top player. I just want to show you this kid from uh, Brighton, Eddie Enkatia, who's on loan from Arsenal. Look at down here, 16 goals and 15 assists. What a player, what a player he is been this season um Tom Barkhausen is well he would have been the sort of player I may have looked at to um to bolster our squad for the Premier League of course he's going there with Preston now so we wouldn't have done that um and that is it we've got promoted we've ended on a high um we've we've been by far the best team it's been an unbelievable season um I was going to show you some of the lone players that were out on loan the only one I am going to show you is Raquel Pike because he was looking really, really good. Um, just got to find him. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Have I got it set to players not at the club? I have. Where is he? Raquel Pike. Um, oh, shall I just search him? Because um, I just wanted to show you this kid because he's been unbelievable for all the shot. He's had two seasons there now on loan. Um, he scored the winner in the playoff final in the Vanarama National to get them up into the Football League. He scored the winner at Wembley in the final. And he scored the goals that got them promoted from League Two as well. They finished third, I think it was, if we um, if we have a quick look at the league table. Yeah, they finished third and he scored the goals that got them up. Um, so he's just been absolutely brilliant for, for them. Um, it would be one of those where I would probably send him out on loan to them again if I could um, because he's just been outrageous for them. 40 goals in 73 games you can see there. Um, really is one that I would have been looking at developing over the course of uh, two or three seasons but of course that isn't going to happen now. Um, so yeah that is it for FM18. Um, it's Tuesday as this is coming out so the beta um, will probably be out on Thursday. It could even be out on Wednesday tomorrow um, but Whenever it is, I cannot wait. I'll be downloading it. I've got a couple of weeks off as well next week. So we've got a lot going on. It's half term and we've got uh, family visiting. But I'm hoping to get some videos recorded and get this new save on FM19 up and running. Um, but guys, if you have stuck with this series all this way, smash that like, hit subscribe, turn on those notifications as well and join me for FM19. But for now, it's a very, very fond farewell to a game that has yet again taken hundreds of hours of my life and yours, I'm sure. Bye-bye, FM18. It's been a lot of fun. It's time to be uninstalled. I'll see you around the corner for FM19. Bye-bye.